Hello! Today we are going to show you how to make this lovely little toast coaster. A little toaster, if you will. So, you're going to need three types of yarn. I am a big twist girly through and through. So, I have big twist in the color khaki, which is this color and the color we're going to use for the meat, or <laughs> I guess the main part of the bread here. I have Big Twist in the color toffee, which is this color, and the color we're gonna be using for the outside for the border of the toast. Here I have Big Twist in the color pale yellow, and that is the color we're gonna use for the little butter pad that goes on the toast. The butter pad is completely optional. If you make your toaster and you're like, that's it, all I wanna do is a toast, that is totally fair. No need for this butter. It's just kind of a nice little accent. Our first yarn that we're going to be working with here is that big twist khaki. So you're just gonna have your yarn tail, which is the end of that yarn. Your working yarn is the yarn that's going up to this ball or skin you have. So our yarn tail is over here. We're going to take this yarn and we're gonna wrap it around. So it's a cheeky little X here around these two fingers. Then we're gonna spread our fingers a little bit. We're gonna reach in grab that yarn from the back and pull through so we have a slip knot ta-da we'll do it again Boop. so we're gonna have our yarn tail all the way down here we're gonna have these two fingers up we're gonna wrap around to make an x push our fingers out so we got a little spot we're gonna take our fingers with our other hands we're gonna reach in and grab that yarn pull it through you have a cheeky little slip knot. So we're gonna take our hook, we're gonna stick our hook through this little slip knot here. So I like to have my tail, my tail yarn, or whatever I'm working with pinched in between my thumb and my index finger on my right hand while my right hand is holding my hook. I like to have my working yarn in my left hand here. So we want a cheeky little 15 stitch length here. So what we are going to do here is we are going to make a chain of 17. And I will tell you why that makes sense later. If it doesn't make sense for a 15 chain row to need 17 chains, I will tell you later, okay? So what we are going to do to chain is we're gonna have that tail end right here, pinched in between our index and thumbs. We're gonna take our working yarn, wrap it around our hook, and then pull through. So that's just one chain. We're gonna take our working yarn, wrap it around, boom, two chains. Same thing, working yarn, wrap it around, three, four, five, six, if it gets stuck, it's fine. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. So we now have our chain of seventeen. This is the base of our toast right here. So we're building out this line. We're gonna yarn over here, and then we wanna insert this hook into chain number 15. So that is going to be one, two, three away from where our hook is. So we're gonna go into stitch number 15. One, two, three away from where our hook is. So we have this yarn, we're yarning over here. We're gonna go into stitch number 15, pull through to the other side, Grab some yarn while we're over there, pull back through, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. So we just created a double crochet here. So we're going to do that same thing again. So we're going to yarn over, go into this next hook right here. So we're going to, sorry, go into this next chain right here. We're gonna push through, grab some yarn while we're on our way there. We have three loops on our hook. We're gonna yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Boom. 
We're gonna do that all the way to the end of the chain. We'll have 15 double crochets. Same thing, yarn over, dip into that single crochet, or sorry, to that chain, grab some yarn, pull it back. We're gonna yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. We're gonna do this all the way to the end. And this is the worst part, chaining or stitching, putting your stitches into the chain is for sure the worst part. So if you can do this, you can do pretty much anything in this pattern. This is gonna be the most difficult it gets. It sucks that it's at the front, but such is chaining. Okay, so the last pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So we should have 15 stitches right here. So I'm gonna just kind of give ourselves a little bit of a bigger loop so nothing gets pulled through. And we're gonna check, we're gonna count. We're gonna go, this big little lumpy guy is one. <laughs> He's a little lumpy, it's okay. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Yay, we have 15. Okay, so always a good idea to count your stitches, especially when you're starting. Um, it'll look a little wonky if you have more stitches and then less stitches, it'll make the lines kind of go a little bit wobbly. So we have 15 here. We're gonna stick our hook back in. We're gonna pull all the way down. So we are flesh, flush. We're gonna pull all the way down so we're flush with our project. We're gonna turn our work. So before we're working here, I have all of this jam towards my right. I'm gonna flip it over so it is towards my left. We have our working yarn in our left hand here. And I'm gonna have my index finger and my thumb hanging out, pinching this just to give us a little bit more grip. And then we're gonna have my working yarn right here. Tail is just kind of hanging out. We don't we don't really care about her uh, anymore. So have my hook in my hand. My little hook part is facing me. We're gonna yarn over and chain three, two, three, and this basically creates our first double crochet. So when we're talking about stitches, double crochet is about three single crochet stitches high. So when you're chaining up and trying to chain the same amount and the same height that a double crochet would be, you're gonna chain up three. So this counts as our first double crochet. We're gonna yarn over and we're gonna do more double crochets. So we're gonna go all the way through. So you're not going to go into this first stitch here, you're gonna go into the second stitch. We wanna line up, since this is our first stitch, this chain is our first stitch, we wanna line up our next stitch with the second stitch of our other row. So if I went into this first hook here, or if I went to this first place here, right? Kinda of be a little, a little weird, a little bit bumpy. That's that little jut out that you don't want. So we're not gonna do that. We're gonna have our three chained up here and we're gonna go into the second stitch from the hook. So we're not gonna go into this one, we're gonna go into that one. And we're just gonna do the same thing all the way across. We're gonna yarn over, dip under, grab some, yarn over, and pull through two, and yarn over again, and pull through two. All the way towards the end. And as soon as you get the hook of this 
the hang of, excuse me, didn't mean to be punny. Uh, hang of this double crochet. It is going to kind of fly by. This is a really easy, simple project um, that I just, I think is so stinking cute. Um, but you're just going to double crochet all the way across. This is where most people get tripped up. So I want you guys to count your stitches. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So it looks like you kind of did all the stitches, but there's our little, our little bumpy friend that we made as our first stitch here. And we're gonna need to go into him too to make it a full 15. So again, always a good idea when you're starting, especially to count your stitches every single time. So now I have 15 across. I'm gonna do that same thing. We're gonna build up three by chaining three. So we're gonna yarn over for one, two, three, turn our work, and that's our first double crochet. Same thing, we're gonna do 14 more. So we're basically just building a giant square. Okay, so we're at our last stitch here and we are going to go into that first little bump. So it's always the chain three that gives us a little bit of weirdness here. So yarn over and then we're just going to find a space to stick our hook into. So it doesn't have to be perfect here, but we're gonna find a space to stick our hook into do not come through this center because it just creates a weird gap here. You're gonna wanna go into like, grab like one or two of these. So there's still some yarn underneath where you pulled and that'll make that little gap a little bit smaller. And that same thing on the double crochet. So we're gonna keep doing this until we have eight rows. You can do it along with me.
Okay, so we have come back to our lovely eight rows tall. So this chain is going to be our first row. So we have our first chain here. We have row two, row three, row four, row five, row six, row seven, and row eight. So we have eight rows here. Same as our eight rows on our finished piece. So we are going to now go into what are called treble crochets, which are basically double crochets plus one. So promise you can do it. It's very simple, very similar concept. So we're gonna stick our hook in our little loop here, pull till it's tight. We're gonna turn our work. So what is gonna happen here is we are gonna start with instead of chaining, we're just going to right in because we want our little our little hoops that we've got here that we're making with our treble crochet to be flush here. So we're not going to chain up and then have it go down because it's going to look a little gappy and a little odd. So what we're going to do is we're going to yarn over twice. So we're going to go one, go around for two. So you should have three little loops on your hook here. Now we're going to go in not the first one, not the second one, not the third one, but the fourth one. All right, three loops here. We're gonna go into our first, second, third, fourth loop here. Stick it in, grab some yarn from the back, pull through. We'll have four loops on our hook. We're gonna yarn over again while we're on this front side of our work. We yarn over again, we're gonna pull through two loops. We're gonna yarn over again, pull through two loops. Yarn over again, pull through two loops. So it's basically the same as a double crochet. You're just adding one more loop. So it's just a little bit taller, but that is what's going to help us create this cheeky little bump on our bread. So we're gonna do this nine times. So I just did one here, we're gonna wrap, twice here, insert our hook, yarn over in the back, yarn over again, go through two, yarn over again, go through two, yarn over again, go through two. Yarn over twice, insert our hook, grab some yarn from the back, yarn over again, pull through two, yarn over again, pull through two, yarn over again, pull through two. So they're really, really tall stitches, which is good for us. We should one, two, three, we are going to do eight. Okay, so we have our eight treble crochets right here. We are going to go over. So this is all, they're all going in that same stitch right there. We're gonna now put a slip stitch in four over. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four. So we're gonna insert our hook for the slip stitch, four stitches over. So you're gonna skip three, one, two, three, you're gonna put it in the fourth stitch right here. So skip three from this giant little cluster that we did here. So we're gonna insert our hook, we're gonna yarn over, come on, yarn over, pull through, and instead of yarning over when we're on our closest side to us, we're just gonna pull straight through. So that's all you're gonna do, is you're gonna grab a stitch from under, pull it through and then pull it through again, almost like a slip stitch. So we are now gonna do the same eight treble crochets in one, two, three, four. So we're gonna go eight treble, treble crochets into our fourth stitch.
Now that we have the last of our trebles here, we're gonna go in one, two, three here. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go into that stitch. We're gonna grab yarn from behind and slip stitch to finish this off. Now, this is our base. This is our base toast. So we're just gonna do one more slip stitch. We're gonna pull through and then you're gonna come through and you're gonna snip it off because we're done. Boop. So we are done with our cheeky little khaki color. This is our base toast that we are gonna have. So we're gonna take our khaki color. We're gonna move the side. We don't need her anymore. We are going to come in with our lovely toffee color here. And basically what we're going to do is just single crochet around. So we're gonna go, you can go into any point you so dream. I'm gonna start selfishly up here at the top because uh, these treble crochets are easy to work into. So I think it's gonna be easier for me, guys, me to show you guys what's going on. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna stick your hook into this first treble crochet. So this first nice bump you see here, you're gonna stick your hook in there. We're then going to grab our yarn. Our little tail is going to be down towards our pinky and thumb. And then we're going to take our working yarn, so the yarn that's connected to this lovely bundle right here. We're gonna put it on our hook. We are going to pull through. We're gonna take our working yarn and then pull through a little slip stitch. And then it is attached, okay? Bada bing, bada boom, we are done. So we are just going to single crochet around. So we are going to put our hook in only one loop on our hook. We're gonna put our hook in. We're gonna grab some yarn from behind, two loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through. Boom, single crochet, keep going. We're gonna go stick our hook in. We're gonna grab some yarn from the back. We're gonna yarn over. Oh my God, it's another one, woohoo. And all you're gonna do is keep doing that all the way around to create that nice little toasted little crust that you get when you're baking your, your lovely bread. We have our lovely top of toast that we got. We got our little, little ridges on the top of our toast, but we need to go all the way around here. So I'm gonna go single crochet, right here, single crochet. Single crochet all the way down. When you get to the bottom side, it's a lot easier because you are just working into the other half of the chain that we worked into the first time. So these lovely, especially compared to the chains that we were working into 
on the sides. Uh, it's a, it's a lot easier. Same thing, we are single crocheting our heart out till we reach the other side. Okay, so I had to end up finishing the outside off camera just because with these little single crochets, uh, I find you need to hold them stupid close to your face to be able to see them because they're really tiny. Um, so I needed to do that off camera. <laughs> but so I have this little boop in between my stitches. So I went all the way around this side and then I came around. So I just have this last stitch. So what I'm gonna do to secure my row is I'm going to stick my hook into, whoop, I'm gonna stick my hook into the underside of this brown stitch here. I'm going to grab some yarn on the back side, pull through, and we're gonna do a slip stitch. So we're just gonna keep on pulling through. And then to fasten off, it's always good practice just to do a chain and then pull through. And then we're gonna cut this yarn because we are done boop, with a brown yarn. So now we have the outside of our toast. So uh, we have some ends to weave in, but we can worry about that later. Next thing and last thing we have to do kind of building wise is going to be our little pad of butter right here. This little pad of butter is four wide and five tall. So we are going to do that right now. Toffee, no longer need it. Pew, we can move it over there. And we're gonna go on to this pale yellow color for our butter. So with our yellow yarn, we are going to start with that same slip knot we started with at the bottom. So you're gonna have the tail hanging out right here between your pinky and your index finger. You're gonna take your other hand, you're gonna wrap it around so we have a nice X there with our top yarn going over the top of our base yarn here. So we're gonna open up our fingers a little bit, reach in there, grab that back yarn, pull through. Boop, slip stitch. Same thing we were doing before. We're gonna have our tail in between our thumb and our index finger here. We're gonna have our hook in our right hand. Whoop, with the little hook part facing you. We're gonna yarn over and we are going to chain five. So we got one, two, three, four, five. So we have five here. We're only supposed to be four wide, but we're gonna actually create our first single crochet here. So this is made out of single crochets. So what we are going to do here is we are gonna stick our hook in our second little chain here. So we're not gonna stick it in this first one, we're gonna stick it in the second. And we're not gonna yarn over anything before we put our hook into the chain. So we're gonna stick it in there, grab some yarn from back, two loops on our hook, we're gonna yarn over pull through, single crochet. We're gonna do that again. Stick your yarn or your hook in the next loop, yarn over, grab some yarn from the back, pull up, you got two loops on your hook. Close it off, that's a single crochet. Go through all the way until you have five. Okay, boom. So, kind of goes without saying, but if you want a larger butter pad or a smaller butter pad, feel free. So all you're gonna do is just kind of add stitches this way or add rows that way. So for this butter pad that I'm doing right now, we're gonna have one, two, three, four, five. So if that suits your fancy, let's roll with that, okay? So we did stitches all the way across. I counted again, we have five. So I'm gonna turn this over that way. We are going to grab our yarn. We're gonna do one chain here, go into the second stitch from the hook, same single crochet all the way over. 
And I'm gonna do this until I reach the end of the row. And then we're gonna do this until we have five rows, excuse me. So that is a little pat of butter that I have got for you guys right now. So good practice. Always going to just do a little slip stitch, pull up, and then cut with our scissors. So we have done all of the crafting parts, and now it is just sewing. So our needle is going to be our best friend here. In order to turn this into this we are going to need to weave in some of these ends and basically what that means is taking our needle putting our yarn on our needle and then just going back and forth a bunch of times throughout the stitch to make sure that there's no ends right because if i like since this is all made out of slip stitches if i just said like yeah i'll just cut the yarn right here and we'll be all dandy at the base then this whole thing would unravel and I think that a lot of people's issues when they're starting, and it was mine as well, is that like you don't weave in your ends enough and then your project starts to unravel in a couple months. And so we do not want that here. So I like to go in whatever you consider the back of your work. So where my stitches are facing upwards here, I like to consider that the front and then we're gonna go to the back. And basically what you're going to do is you're just gonna go back and forth. So I like to do this probably about three times. So I usually go like through one way, through the other way. And I'm just going through the middle of the stitches here. So I'm just picking up like the back part of the stitches and then pulling through. I have to go one, two, and then let's go three all the way here. And then I like to finish it off by going in the opposite direction. So I'm gonna pick up some stitches here and I'm just gonna kind of go all the way through, kind of twisting as I go, pushing through, pulling with my needle. And then at this point, you can cut your yarn and safely assume that it is not going anywhere. So, boop. I'm just gonna cut right there. That is one tail done. So we are going to do that with the other tail right now. And then these ones are a little bit different because obviously this is a larger chunk. You can weave in in a lot more places. This one is gonna be a little bit uh, of a tricky thing because you wanna try and keep it on the border. So that's that same thing. We're gonna thread our yarn through our needle here, pull through. And then we're gonna go back and forth about three times, pull through, <laughs> it's always good practice to kind of like stretch your work again as you're going because I've done the thing where I've gone back and forth a bunch of times and I've like really pulled this um, and then one of your like parts of your work just has like this weird tight spot. Um, and it just looks like something's a little off. So it's always good practice to kind of stretch your yarn and your project to make sure that you're not doing anything that's going to restrict the project in any way. So I went through back and forth three times. I'm going up through all of those stitches and then I'm going to cut and then check my end somewhere off camera. So we have our lovely front of our toes here. All of our beige parts are secure. We are good to go there. Um, we are now just looking at these little end toast parts. So what I like to do with these is kind of just go back and forth and back and forth through that. But you wanna go up, back and up. So just like those three times, there are those three directions that we did when we were weaving in the ends at the back. 
or sorry, with the um, beige yarn, we want to do the exact same thing here. So what I like to do is just kind of weave your way through the stitches. So I go back and forth and back and forth, and then I'll pull all the way over here, just with one of these stitches. There's still this loose end that's hanging out over there, and we'll use that on the other side. So same thing, I'm going to go back and forth through those same loops that we just went through. Again, make sure we're stretching out our work so it doesn't get all weird and tight in one corner. And the same thing for the last time, we're gonna go back and forth. Whoop, and back and forth. I'm gonna pull through, whoop. There we go. And at this point, you can just cut this off. Boop. And you're good to go. Now for our last end that is on this project right now, what we're going to do is we're going to do that exact same thing. So we're gonna tighten it up. We're gonna go right here, threading our needle with our yarn. Part of it got stuck, that's okay. And we're gonna go, so we went up with the other yarn, so I'm gonna go down with this yarn. So usually I don't like to stack them too much, like try and weave in the ends in different places just so nothing looks a little suspiciously thick, like you weave in a lot of ends there. Wove, you know, the English language. Here, and we're just gonna do that same thing, back and forth. And back and forth. And we're pulling through, making sure to adjust and make sure that nothing's looking all weird. And last time we're gonna go up and through and up and through. Pull through all the way, pull in with this, make sure that we're nice and stretched out. Everything's all nice and stretched out. Boom, cut this off, done. So if you do not want to do the pad of butter, you are done, that is it. Um, but if you are a butter lover like me, do the last part and attach. Hi. Oh, hi. Just scared the living crap out of me. <laughs> Jeez. Hi. hi. So I have a small helper here that might pop her way in. If you are a butter lover like me, uh, we are going to attach this. So you're gonna take one of the ends, I don't care, and weave it in just like you normally do. Hi, honey. You want some butter? Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, yeah. Really good for tutorials. Definitely a valuable piece. So you're going, <laughs> going, <laughs> you're gonna take your end and you're gonna do the same thing of going back and forth, just about three times. So you're just pulling it through the middle here, doing that, making sure you're stretching the piece out in between so nothing looks all janked up. <laughs> and then once we stretch it out one last time, you're going to go through the stitches you just made to secure them. Mm -hmm. So helpful. And then you're gonna take your scissors and you're just gonna cut this yarn so we are good to go. So we should only have one working tail here that we're in that tail, but don't worry about that tail. We have one working yarn tail um, and one cat tail here with us. So 
What's really cool about the way that I sewed this is that you cannot see the yellow stitches from the other side. So that's our goal right now. If you need to go just up and down, back and forth, uh, that is totally cool. Um, that is just not the look that I'm going for, but if that's what you can do right now, more power to you. So we're gonna thread our yarn again. And the key to not making the stitches visible on the other side is just kind of going through this surface layer here. So if I take my stitch and I put it through here, If I put it through right here, then you cannot see it on the back. That's our goal is to kind of have this surface level. So I've seen people do it in the center and I think I'm gonna do it off to the side uh, just to mix it up a little bit. So we're gonna mix it up a little bit. Do that same thing of threading our yarn. Then we are going to put our little pad of butter in the corner here. So this is kind of where I want it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to surface stitch. I'm just getting the top of this and then I'm pulling through all the way because I don't care if you can see the stitches on the yellow part because they're basically invisible anyways. So I want to pull through all the way here. I'm going to pull down and then we are going to do that same surface stitch right here. Pull all the way through up here. Same surface stitch right here. And you're just gonna keep going the length of the butter and sewing it on there. Here, here, here. Same thing, you're just making sure to not punch all the way through the back you're just doing the surface stitches here, the first couple. reached your full sew on this butter, you are just going to do the same thing for weaving in the ends that we've done previously. So this is why we leave as long of a tail as we do, just because it's a lot easier. But if you find, like I'm finding right here, you didn't leave enough of a tail to really, you know, do that three, then the two and down is fine. Like back and forth and then down is fine. Go all the way down here, feed our little end, our little tail into our toast here and pull through. And then we can cut off this end and we are done. So I hope you guys had a fabulous time making our little butter toast coasters here. Um, they're super fun and super cute. Um, and I love anything that's just a little bit weird. I have an online shop an Instagram and TikTok. Um, so please follow me on all of those. All of those are just citizens crochet. And let me know if there's anything else that you guys want to see from me. Um, if you guys make this, I would just love to see them. So like tag me. I just love to see all of your guys' work and this lovely community, um, that has been created by a love of crochet. So you guys can give me a tag, leave me a comment if you want, and I will see you guys soon. Bye.